community. If you don't know what that means, basically it's my responsibility to help young men break up with their girlfriends so they can become priests. You know? Just kidding. Um, now, I don't know about you, but I, I've been, you know, I've been pretty wrapped up in the news cycle over the last week, right? Lots going on, lots happening. And uh, it feels like every time we turn on the TV, right, there's a new crisis in the world. We're here in the United States. And, um, uh, and it's kind of, it's concerning, right? Every time it's like, what's going on in the world, Lord? What's going on here in, in, in this amazing country, this great nation? And when I look at the world, it's a real mixed bag because there's so many, I look at the world, there's so many beautiful things about living in the world today. There's so many beautiful things about living in this country. There's so many beautiful things about being born in, in the, living in the 21st century. But there's a lot of things that are confusing and messed up. There's a lot of brokenness in the world, and there's a lot of brokenness in myself. You know, on the one hand, we live uh, in you know the strongest democracy in the world, and perhaps all of history. And at the same time, it feels like sometimes we're just on the, the edge of the knife. Right? And it all can change so quick. We live in a, a world that's marked by this deep awareness, social consciousness of injustice in the world. And yet at the same time, we, we can't seem to escape violence, war, poverty. Never before have so many people uh, had access to almost miracle-like breakthroughs in medical technology and healthcare, and yet today there's a pandemic and depression and anxiety, mental illness, uh, suicide rates higher than ever have, they've ever been. Digital technology, which is a, a beautiful gift, allows us to connect with people we love all around the world. We've never been more digitally connected in history, and yet never felt so alone. Isolated. And never have so many people had so much access to all the information in the world at their fingertips. Encyclopedias and histories at, at the touch of a of a of an icon on my on my phone. And yet people are starving for a lack of meaning and purpose. Who am I and why am I here? And what's this, what's this all about? And no matter what we do, it feels like we're just running into the same problems over and over and over again. And I, I ask myself, like, Lord, like what would God say if you looked at us today? If you looked at the world? Wait, what does God think about the world that we find ourselves in? I think he would say the same thing that he said to his people. We're living in exile. We heard from the prophet Jeremiah who spoke to his people Israel. And, and they were living in exile in, in, a, in a different country and among a foreign people where they felt out of place. And I don't know about you, but sometimes I feel like I'm out of place. And in the modern world. And the people of God, they're in exile. Why are they in exile? Because uh, they've had such a history of poor leadership. Right? That the, the, the kings of Israel had led them into the worship of idols and false gods. And the punishment always for worshiping idols is, is the experience of exile. To be separated from, from God, separated from ourselves, separated from each other. That's the effect of, of human sin, Right? Alienation from self, from God, and from others. But God is not satisfied with the situation he finds his people in. He's, he's, not, he's not happy with the status quo. He wants more for his people. And so he sends a prophet, Jeremiah, and he makes them this promise. He says, I will raise up a righteous branch from David, for David. David, of course, was the king of Israel many generations earlier. And God promises he will raise up a king who shall reign and govern wisely. He shall do what is just and right in the land. And in his days Judah shall be saved and Israel shall dwell in security. 
God is making this promise to his people. A promise that God has come to fulfill in the person of Jesus. You know, in the ancient Israel, they would refer to the king as the shepherd of Israel. David was the shepherd of Israel. And God promised to raise up a new shepherd who we see in Jesus. And I, and I think this is how Jesus, uh, when Jesus looks at the world, this is what, what he feels. We, we heard in the gospel, um, Jesus is, is with his disciples, and they had just done all this ministry, so they're all tired and exhausted. And Jesus says, come away with me to a deserted place and get some rest. But when he gets there, he finds that there's all these people there waiting for him. Right? They're trying to escape people to rest. I don't know if you've ever felt that way done that escaping from people to rest and there's all these people there it's like nowhere to go and and instead of instead of trying to run away it, the scripture says uh, jesus when they disembark from the boat he, it says his heart was moved with pity for them because they were like sheep without shepherd they were like sheep without a shepherd now, I love the word. His, it says his heart was moved with pity. In, in Greek, there's this word. I really, it sounds, it's a lot of fun to say. It's uh, splank needs so mine. Splank needs so mine. Say that with me. Splank needs so mine. It's fun to say. Um, it literally means he was moved in his bowels, in his guts, in his, in his innards. That's a literal translation of the word. The idea is, is it something moved in the deepest depths of his being? So next time somebody does something really nice for you, you can be like, oh, dude, you're, you're really touching me in this blank, in this blank needs of mine right now. See, Jesus, when he sees suffering, Brokenness. He's moved from the deepest depths of his being. He's compassionate and merciful. And I think when Jesus looks at the world today, he looks at the world, he says, they're like sheep without a shepherd. And God has given us himself in and through Jesus, who has come to be our shepherd. Who has come to be our king. And the scriptures promise that whoever placed their trust in Jesus will experience security in a world in the midst of insecurity. In, in a world of instability, we will find rest for our souls. That's what the psalm says. The Lord is my shepherd. There is nothing I shall lack. In him I will find all that I need and all that I desire. I'll no longer rely on myself for what I need. I will turn to the shepherd who will provide for me. In green pastures, he leads me to lie down. To still waters, he leads me. He restores my soul, and he guides me along right paths for the sake of his name. And I love this. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Brothers and sisters, we're not alone. We have such a shepherd who gathers his flock together like we are gathered here today. All around the world, the Lord is gathering his people together to feed us with his own life in the gift of, of the Eucharist, to, to fill us with his peace. If only we turn to him and we place our faith and our confidence in our Lord, we say, Lord, I, I won't trust in the world, I won't trust in, in our political leaders. I put my trust in you because you are the king of this world. You are the king of my life and you are the king of my heart. All my fears, all my anxieties, all the things that I, I'm concerned about are my place in your hands. You are my shepherd. You are my king. 
and I will fear no evil, even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. Indeed, goodness and mercy will, will pursue me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord 